Welcome back to the video, and today I'm going to cover the scheduling algorithms and how to find the average wait time. I'm going to cover first come, first serve, shortest job first, shortest job first, preemptive, and then uh, round robin. So probably the simplest one to calculate is uh, first come, first serve. Just think of like a restaurant, like a McDonald's, who's ever in line first, whoever got there first, will get to order first. So the way we could calculate that, we could draw something called the Gantt chart, and then we could put our processes in there. So we're going to start at time zero. The first process in line to like McDonald's or to get service is going to be P1. So we can write P1 and its burst time is 24. So it's going to execute for 24 milliseconds. So P1 is done. The next in line is P2. So we can put P2 in there. And then that executes for 3 seconds. So that could be 24 plus 3 equal to 27. So that's done. And then P3 is last. That executes for 3 seconds as well. So we do 27 plus 3 equals 30 milliseconds. And the way we calculate the average wait time, we could say average wait time equals, it's, it's however long each process waited. P1, it didn't wait nothing. It got there at time 0 and then it started executing. P2 had to wait until time 24 to start executing. So we could do plus 24. And then P3 had to wait until time 27 to, to start executing. So that's the way you find the average wait time. We add them all up. I'm pull a calculator out because I'm not too good at math anymore. It's going to be 51. And then we divide it by however many processes. There's three processes. Divide them by three. And that's going to be equal to 17 milliseconds. So that's the average wait time in this case of the first come first serve algorithm. So now let's go to the next example. It's going to be the shortest job first algorithm. Instead of like uh, deciding who, go who goes next in line based on like who was there first, it's going to, whoever has the shortest burst time is going to go next in line. So we could do the same thing. We could draw our Gantt chart. So the, we're going to start at time zero. The process with the shortest burst time, the shortest execution time is going to go first. I don't know if you've ever been to like a supermarket and like you're in line. And you only have like two things or one thing and a lady in front of you has like a cart. So she'll let you go first because it'll get you out of line sooner because you only have one or two things. It's kind of similar to this. So the shortest uh, burst time is going to be P4. So we can do P4. And its um, execution time is going to be 3. Or its burst time is going to be 3. So I'm just looking at the little chart right here. So it's going to execute for 3 seconds. I cross it off. And now the next shortest burst time is going to be P1. So we're going to add 6 to the 3. It's going to be 9 seconds. It executes for 6 seconds. So now we're at 9. And then P3 is next. And that's going to be 7. It's burst time is going to be 7. So we're going to do make that 16. And then the last one is going to be P2. With a burst time of uh, 8. So it's going to be 25. So we're just picking the, the process with the shortest burst time. And then putting it next in the Gantt chart. P4 had a burst time of 3. So it got to go first. P1 had a burst time of 6. So it got second. P3 had a burst time of 7. So I went third, and then P2 had the longest burst time, so I went eight, so I went fourth. And these numbers, we're just adding them. We start at zero, P4's burst time is three, and then P1's burst time is six, which is three plus six, then we get to nine. And then P3 had a burst time of seven, nine plus seven, 16. P2's burst time is eight, 16 plus eight is 25. And to calculate the average wait time again, we can say average wait time. It's gonna be however long each process waited. P4 didn't wait at all. So you could do zero because it, once it got there, it started executing. P1 waited three seconds, three milliseconds to start executing. P3 waited nine because it had to wait for P4 and P1. So you do plus nine. And then P2 had to wait for six, 16 milliseconds. And then we could add them all up. Got the calculator. It's going to be equal to 28. And divided by however many processes there is, there's four. And that's going to be equal to 7 milliseconds. So that's the uh, shortest job first wait time. Now we're going to go to shortest job first preemptive. So it's very similar, but there's going to be another like um sub another, another time we have to account for is going to be arrival time. So if a process gets there first, if its arrival time is zero, it's going to start executing. For example, P1, its arrival time is zero, so it's going to start executing for one time unit. If another process comes in, and it has a shorter burst time, it's going to preempt it. It's going to be like, hey, buddy, I'm next in line. Get out of here, skedaddle. 
and then it's going to start executing for one one time period. But and then after that time period, if another process comes in and has a shorter burst time, it's going to kick the previous one out. So it's kind of kind of weird, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. So the same thing, we're going to draw a GAN chart. And I like to kind of have some like I don't know if they, I don't know what you call them, like variables, time, and then I'll write P1, P2, P3. This is just like almost like variables to keep count of what each um what each process is at. So I can write P1 now, P2 now, P4 now, and then time. So we're gonna start at a time period equal to zero. Time period or yeah, time period equal to zero. So P1 gets there at zero. So we can write time zero and then P1. Oh, I'm not in there. P1. So now we're at time one. At time one, oh, now let me also write P, uh, P, P1's um, burst time. So it executes for one second. So now it's seven because it executed for one for one second because it went from time zero to time one. Now we're at time one, and then P2 gets here at time one. P2 has a shorter burst time uh, than P1. So P2 is going to execute for one. So it's going to kick P2 out like, hey, buddy, I'm more important than you. So now we're at time two. At time two, P3 gets here, but P3, uh, his burst time is not shorter than P2. So P2 is going to, oh, let me decrement P2 as well. So P2 is going to go again because P3's burst time is not shorter shorter than P2. P2's burst time is now three. So P2 is going to go again. So now his burst time is two. Now we're at time three. Time three. Uh, P4 comes in, but his burst time is not less than P2's. So now we can just go P2 for another time period. P2 is at 1, and then P2 is going to finish at time 5. So P2 is done. Let's cross it out. And then we can write what P3 is. P3's burst time is 9, and P4 burst time is 5. So now P1 is 7. Now we're, now we're just looking up here. And then let me also write my time. Three, four, five. We're looking at this location now. Let's see if I could uh, circle it a little better. So everyone's here now. Now we just have to go on the. It's pretty much shortest job first because everyone's here, and uh, whoever needed to be preempted, uh, it was. Uh, P1 was preempted because P2 had a shorter burst time. Okay. So now we have to pick who has the shortest burst time. So now it's P4. There's no more uh, burst. There's no more processes arriving. So we don't have to worry about that now. P4 has a burst time of 5. So we can write P4 in here. And it's going to go until it's done. So now it's at 10. So now that one's done. Now P4 is done. We can cross it out. Now the next um, the next uh, process to go next is going to be P1. So we we'll write P1 in here. And it's burst time is 7. So that's 17. So now P1 is done executing. And now P3 is next. P3 is the last one, so it's going to be 17 plus 9, it's going to be equal to 26. And now to calculate the average wait time, it is a little bit uh, more tricky, let me move this problem down. But there's a, there's a formula we could use to calculate it, let's see if I could select this and move this down. I can, the next one is round robin, but, okay, so there's a, there's a, like a little formula to calculate the average wait time, so I'm going to write it down. So we could say, Wait time is equal to, let me write in the next line so I'll have space. Wait time is equal to, okay, that's fun. I'm not going to edit it at all, so whatever. Wait time is equal to total wait time. And I'll explain it right now a little bit. Total wait time minus time executed minus arrival time. The way I like to think of it, I like to say WT stands for wait time. If you're taking the test, just remember this. WT equals TWT minus TE, time executed, minus AT. That's so I just thought we find it. And then we have to find the wait time for each process. So we could say P1 wait time 
and set that equal to total wait time. So P1 wait time in this case would be total wait time is 10, because that's when P1 starts executing. It starts executing here, but its total wait time is 10 minus time executed. So it executed for one millisecond. So we could do minus one minus its arrival time. P1's arrival time is zero. So it's going to be equal 9. So P1's wait time is going to be 9 milliseconds. So now I'll do the same thing for P2 to find its total wait, to find its wait time. So we can say P2 wait time is going to be equals to its total wait time. P2 only had to wait 1 millisecond to execute. It didn't execute anything before it, so we could do minus 0. And then P2's arrival time is just 1. So if we do that 1 minus 0 minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. So that P, that's P2's. Now we can do P3, and then find its wait time. So P3 had to wait 17 seconds to start executing, its total wait time. And before that, P3 didn't execute at all, so no time executed. And then P3's uh, arrival time is 2, so we can do minus 2, it's going to be 15 for P3. And the same thing for P4, its wait time. So P4 had to wait, what is that, 5 milliseconds, its total wait time. And it had no previous execution, so you do minus 0 for time executed. And then P4's arrival time is 3, minus 3. And that's going to be equal to 2. And then we're going to add up all these numbers. What is that, just 26? Divided by 4. Get my calculator out, it's going to be 6.5. So that's short as job first, preemptive. Make a little example. Hopefully this makes sense and I didn't confuse you anymore. So let me see if I can go back over it. P1 is going to get here at time 0. It's going to execute for one time period. And then after one time period, we're going to see if there's another process arriving. So P2 arrives at one time period. So then P2 is going to like kick P1 out of here because it has a, like a, sh has a shorter burst time. And then for uh, P2 is going to execute for one time period. And then we're going to check if uh, at time 2 another process comes in. Uh, P3 comes at time 2 but um, 9 won't be less than 3 because um, P2 had already executed for one time period. So then um, we're at time period 3, P2 still running. We check if P4 is less than uh, P2's burst time which is now 2. It's not so P4, P2 gets to finish so then P2's done. And then after that, since there's no more right, there's no more process arriving, it's just going to be shortest job first. And then like the next job, where well, the shortest burst time is going to execute. In this case, it was P4 with five milliseconds. P4 finishes, and then it was P1 with seven milliseconds. It done, it gets done, and then P3 had the last. It was last because it had the longest burst time, and then it gets done. And then we use this formula. It's called it's to, it's to find the wait time. It's total wait time. I just think of it as TWT minus time executed, which is TE minus AT, which is arrival time. So for P1, it had to wait 10 seconds, which is its total wait time, but it did execute for one second, so we subtract 10 minus one, and its arrival time was zero, so that's how we get the nine. P2, its total wait time was just one, I don't know if you can see it right there, and then it didn't execute for no time, and its arrival time was just one. So we do 10, we do one minus zero minus one equal to zero. P3, its wait time was uh, right here, 17. So, and then before that, it didn't execute at all. And its arrival time was 2. So we do 17 minus 0 minus 2, we get to 15. And the same thing for P4. P4 had to wait, what is that, 5 milliseconds right here. It didn't execute anything before that. And P4's arrival time uh, was 3, excuse me. So that's 2. So we're going to do 26 divided by 4. That's like modulus. Divided by 4. It's going to be equal to 6.5 milliseconds, and that's going to be its arrival time. Let's see if I can circle it and write it a little better. So the preemptive one is pretty hard. It's probably the hardest one out of these four. You just make like a little section for time so you can keep track of time, and then keep track of whatever process is, in, is at now, because they are going to execute, and it is going to get like a little messy. So just keep, out, keep track of what, what, uh, what the current burst time is. Okay, so the next scheduling algorithm is going to be round robin. It's not as quite as like complicated as like um, shortest job first preemptive. So with round robin, it's um you're gonna have some processes, and each process is only going to be able to run for a certain amount of time. And that time is going to be based on the time quantum, which should be given to you. So in this case, time quantum is four. 
So P1 is only going to run for 4 milliseconds. P2 is only going to run for 4 milliseconds. And then same thing with P3. So let's draw the Gantt chart. We're going to start at time 0. And then so P1 is going to run. Let me write up P1, P2, and then P3. And then we'll write what they are at this time. Right now, now, equals, equals, and then equals. So P1 is going to run for 4 milliseconds. So P1 is now 20. And then P2 is going to run for 4 milliseconds. But it doesn't need 4 milliseconds. It needs 3. And then it's done. So we're going to write P2. And then at 7 milliseconds, it's done. Because it, this burst time is 3. We just added 4 plus 3 is 7. So I can make this 2 a little better. And then the same thing with P3. It only needs 3 milliseconds. So we can write P3. So P2 is now done. And then P3. It was given a time quantum of 4 milliseconds, so it could run for 4, but it only needs 3, so at time 10, P3 is done. So now we're just left with P1. P1 is now at uh, 20, so we could do P1, and now we're at 14, now it's at 16. Do P1 again, now we're at 18, now P1 is at, uh, what, 12? And then we could keep adding to the Gantt chart. We'll do P1 again. Now we're at 22. And then P1 should be at 8. And then we'll have 8, which is divisible by 2. We're going to another 2 more, and then we're done. At 26, P1 is going to be at 4. And then at time 30, P1 is going to finish. Be at 0. So this is pretty much just round robin. Each process gets 4 milliseconds or a certain amount of time to run. And then once it does, you just have to keep track of it what, at what, is it, what it is now. And then move on to the next process. So P1 ran for 4 milliseconds. That put it at 20. P2 only needed 3 milliseconds, so it didn't need the full 4. So it just needed 3. We just add that up. Same thing with P3. Add that up. And then the next time is all meant for P1 because these two are done. So P1 is going to run for 4 milliseconds each until it's done. And the way to calculate the, um, the average wait time, it's going to be a very similar formula to the one we just talked about. So I'll just see if I could uh, copy this over. And then we'll paste it. It's going to be almost the same thing. This is not going to be an arrival time. So we can get rid of that. So we could do the same thing we did for P1, P2, and P3. So you can say P1, P2, P3 to calculate its wait time. Okay, so the way we do that, we have to see what uh, what um, P1's total wait time is. So P1 had a wait, total wait time of 10, 10 milliseconds, but it did execute prior to that for 4. So we can do 10 minus 4, which is going to be equal to 6. And let's do the same thing with P2. So P2 had to wait 4 milliseconds, so we can do 4, which is the total wait time, and it didn't execute for anything. And it, and before that, it didn't execute for any time, so we could do... Just four, and then P3 had to wait for seven milliseconds, and but before that P3 didn't execute, so we could do minus zero. So we're gonna have seven, six, and four together. That equals seventeen. I don't think I'm good enough to do that in my head, so I'm gonna get my calculator. Divide that by the how many processes there was. It's gonna be five point six six milliseconds. So that's the total wait time for uh, Ron Robin. And that's about it. If this helped you in any way, uh, please leave a like and uh, consider subscribing or something else.